good uh, look on the presentation itself or the video. So towards the end of uh, the presentation environment, supposedly you should be able to come up with a video like this. And I will require you to upload this uh, video into the CDOS. That's the main purpose of this exercise. Okay, so the first thing that we should do before that happens is you need to create the parts. We need to create the parts. Okay, so please have a look. Parts 1 here. Okay. So please go to create these parts. I will also create this one. So it's a very direct one. The rubric here will be 12 times 12, eh? a square of 12 times 12. So you have four on each row and column. So it's very direct. Okay. So please go to create. So just close it. Cheers. Okay, this one just close it. Okay, to this sketch as usual. So I will just sketch three rectangles. Three rectangles. One, two, and three. Three rectangles. Okay, so. A little bit add is it add just to double check yeah okay so add 444 four, four, and 12 huh? okay as been mentioned to you this will be four each column and row will be four so here to here so be four similarly or you can provide 12 huh? so I think then the last part here will be four so that will be our initial sketch and the only sketch for this part itself. Okay, for this part. Before we extrude to 4, so please create this as our initial sketch. So once you have provide all the dimension there, then please go to finish your sketch and then we are going to extrude. Okay. Let's do the extrusion. Ensure you select. Okay, then you four. Please extrude to the distance of four. Four for the first part here. Distance of four, please. And I think that's all. We are ready for this. We are ready. Okay, so I would like you to change the appearance to blue color. Lah. Please change the appearance. Appearance wise, eh? clear blue. No, the I would like to solid blue. Blue. Okay. Ah. Okay. So please change to blue color for appearance. Eh? Then please set this as part one. Please save as part one, please. Extrude four. So that will be our first part for the rubric. Okay, second one will be this. The second part. So please go to create this part itself. So also very direct. Let me share with you new create also also one sketch should be sufficient you just need one rectangle here and then the other rectangle here so what you ought to do with the rectangles here you need to ensure midpoint and midpoint they, they are the same right so you go to apply what we call coincidence how come this one doesn't move upwards okay so please go to coincidence constraint look at the midpoint and look at the midpoint see 
So then you provide all the dimension that you need to be 4. Then here will be 12. Similarly, 4. And I think we have 12, right? Okay, this one will be at that. Okay, I think we should have a, a, the adequate. This one will be 4, is it? So automatically because it will be divided equally. So I think that's all for the dimension that, that I need to apply for this geometry. The profile, finish your sketch and then go to extrude, select your profile, then this turn will be 4. So change the appearance to yellow. change the appearance to yellow then please save this as part two part two eh? okay please change to part two here the next one will be this one part number three for this one we would require to have two sketch here one for this uh, vertical part here of 12, 12 times 4, then another one you need to select the uh, bottom work plan here to create another rectangle here of uh, 4 times 8. Okay, so for this one, mm, new. So the first thing that we create will be rectangles on it and rectangles with the dimensions of 12 times 4 12 here and then you have 4 here okay so then finish extract to 4 so please get this ready this I want this uh, part here 12 times 4 then extract to 4 please so i give you a minute for you to get ready for this before we do second sketch secondary sketch on the bottom side of here okay one minute for this please okay, proceed what you need to do sec another sketch 2d sketch so just rotate to here rotate to this uh, this side itself so I would like to create a rectangle here actually so end point here rectangles with the distance of 4 here will be 4 so okay so I ensure that you select the correct uh, plan that will be the important uh, things to consider here so uh, it should look like this eh? From the, the bottom surface here, you extrude to add actually this. Okay, so this rectangle square here, once we finish, then extrude this to flip the direction, the distance is actually at that set. Okay, so I ensure you select the correct uh, surface to create this. It should look like this in this orientation. So I will change this one, the appearance to maybe like this. Not so nice. Okay, maybe like this. Okay, just let it remain like this. So this one please save as part number three. Part number three, please. So that will be our part okay next one that we should do will be uh, part number four so part number four will look like this so it's only uh, one two three right three uh, rectangles that you need to create in inventor so uh, new parts so only one sketch will do for this. So it should look like okay, one, two, and three. 
one here, two, and then I need to ensure uh, this one and this one, right? Okay, we need to align the midpoint and the midpoint. Okay, align the midpoint, so it will be coincidence. Eh? Coincidence, uh, midpoint and midpoint. Okay, so that you will snap up to the same uh, location itself. Right after that, I think this one, then we need to go, come up with a dimensional constraint. So you just follow this, okay. Here to here also, should follow this. Okay, then here to here. Similarly, I would like to follow this, okay. And I should have this one as 12. And I should have this one as 12 or so. Okay, so once I already apply all these, uh, it will be stable enough for me to proceed to the extrude method. Okay, so please uh, get this one ready for extrusion. Okay, so I'm going to finish uh, this sketch, then extrude. Select, then so you select all your profile, then four, four. Okay, so extrude to four. So please change the appearance. Uh, this one I would like it to be. Pink. pink, okay, just let it pink. Okay, please save this one as part number four. Please save this part as part number four. It should look like this, okay. And last and for all, we will have part number five. Part number five will look like this. Okay, so this one also relatively easy, only one sketch. One sketch here. Open up the same standard mm, the IPT file. To the sketch also, similarly. So the shape will be one rectangle at the top. And I have another one here before I have another one joining up from, from here, right? So it should look like this. So the important one will be to ensure that uh, the midpoint and the midpoint. Eh? So we did this uh, quite a few times already. Hopefully you understand the principle of it. Okay, just uh, repositions the midpoint. Midpoint and midpoint, you see. So then right after that will be relatively easy be two of all the dimension that you ought to apply. Okay, wait, this one I'm looking the wrong one for us. Okay, maybe I should put this one first. Four. Okay. Follow this. This one and. Okay, then this one I can refer to so, so we will realign okay I think this one is uh, stable enough for extrude mode okay so kindly do so okay class once you have done this have get everything ready the dimension please finish sketch eh? as usual then extrude to Four. Step around here. Distance will be four in that sense, and change maybe this to red color. Red. Okay, so it should look like this. And our next task will be to bring in into the assembly environment. Okay, to bring.
bring them into the assembly environment. So please save this, please. Save as part number five. So all together we have five parts here. Okay, one, two, three, okay, four, and five. Okay, so the orientation wise, for the orientation, you should pay attention to this. Okay, so you should try to bring in in such form. So uh, this one come in at the middle and then the, the orientation should look like this. So when you try to bring in, okay. So any questions before we go to the assembly environment? Without further delay, we proceed eh, to new IAM or so. IAM create. So you should bring in all the parts file inside there. Eh? So as usual, assembly go place component. Eh? Place component. Place. So it should be in the same project file that you have. So you can select one by one. Or what I want to do here, I would like to show to you, you can bring in uh, part 1 to part number 5 by holding on to shift. Holding on to shift. This is like window selection. If you are familiar with it, or else you can bring in part 1 open, part 2 open. Okay, no problem. Eh? But this one, I would like to bring in parts 1 to part number 5. Once I click open here, they should be inside the assembly. Okay, only one copy should be sufficient now. Any problem in this? So please rotate uh, the parts so that it will have the orientations like the one in the video here. So free rotate here, just go here, then this one's supposed to look like this, right? Okay. Next one, uh, this one, where is this? Uh, this one's supposed to look like this. Okay, more or less. Huh? Okay, this one is supposed to be here. You should rotate it. Okay, then this one's supposed to be straight vertically. Last one, this one is supposed to be here. Okay. So after you have rotate, then you can bring it, bring them into the uh, positions accordingly, lah, so that you it will be easier for you to rotate. If you find that you still need to do a little bit of rotation, you can continue it here. Okay, so the core will be the red color one, huh? So it should look like this. It should be fine like this. As I mentioned, we only use matte constraint, matte flush, flush, so that they will have the same surface. You see, matte will be touch. Okay, mm -hmm. I will show to you between this and this on here, this part here, as you see here, as you can see here. So first of all, I know that matte, this part here, this inner part here, supposed to touch with which surface? This surface here, right? That one confirm. You see like this? Okay, do you see? So second surface. So I can go click apply. Okay, once I apply, touch that surface already. But you will see the orientation is not right. You will see, maybe once you rotate here and there, right? Angle is not the same. Okay, what we can do will be, we can flush them. So you see flush. So I know this top surface and this top surface, they're supposed to be aligned, right? So click. You see they are now aligned 
Nah, offset will be zero. Eh? Apply. Okay. Another the one. Okay. If you want to uh, see the effects right after you have applied the constraint, you still can drag. Okay. What is the one lacking here? They are aligned already, but somehow they clash between each other. You see, they 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 still clash. Okay. So what do you need to do? Constraint again. Now I would like to map that so that it, it wouldn't penetrate through this solid, which is not logic, right? So you know that this surface here is supposed to touch which surface? Sorry, this is an one. Okay, this one is supposed to touch on this with this surface, right? They are touching each other. Okay, so map, then I apply. Okay, once you rotate it again, uh, now I you drag, uh, you will see this geometry is relatively stable in current condition. It's relatively stable now. Okay, that will be the first part itself. Then you can continue on second, third, and fourth. Maybe I show to you another one so that you have a grab. You can grab the idea. I will post this one into the YouTube also. Uh, later you can refer to the, but you must try it yourself. Okay. Okay. Constraint again. So first thing, you need to apply map. So I know that this surface here is supposed to touch with this surface. Okay. We apply. Okay. So they are touching each other already. At this moment, uh. but you will see the, the, the orientation, the angle between the top and the top, they are not the same now. So what you need to do that, you need to apply flush to realign them. Uh. It's not necessary on the top surface. Maybe you say, okay, I know that this one for sure you will touch on. They will have the same plan as this, right? So you can apply this part here also together with this. You see? So they are aligned now. Apply. Next one will be, you will see that now it's supposed to touch each other on the bottom side. Oh, they are supposed to be aligned here. So, right? so I can use flush again. Flush this. This. Apply. So once I drag this one, you see, it's not, you, you cannot move this one. So means that this is, uh, stable in a stable condition. Stable condition. Trend, eh? If you already applied the wrong constraint, you think that it's not right actually. Okay, so you can go to your browser, select the constraint that you already applied, right hand click and delete that constraint. So once you delete, it's not there, really. then it's free already. Eh? You see, if I delete this constraint, delete, and then I delete this, right? So, see? You return back free, yeah! Okay, so that's how you do editing uh, on the browser itself, to delete the constraint that you read.